Hello, everyone. I'm Adrian, and uh, today I'll present our work on binarized convolutional landmark localizers for human pose estimation and phase alignment with limited resources. I'll start by offering a brief overview of the problem at hand, building up on previous works. I will then continue by presenting our main contributions and the key results of our work. Recently, CNNs have achieved remarkable performance on a wide variety of tasks, such as image recognition, object detection, human pose estimation, or face alignment. While such approaches offer unprecedented results in order to achieve real-time or close to real-time performance, one or more high-end GPUs are usually required. This is especially problematic when such methods need to run on devices with limited computational resources, such as uh, smartphones or small single board embedded devices like a Raspberry Pi. In this work, we attempt to bring that performance on devices with such computational constraints, focusing especially on fine-grained recognition tasks like human pose estimation and face alignment. A popular way of speeding up the network and compressing the model is achieved via network quantization. Of special interest is the two-state network quantization, also called binarization, which allows us to replace all the multiplications with bitwise operations. While initially thought to be infeasible, recent work by Proverbio et al. and Rastegari et al. show promising results on classification and object detection. Our method builds up on their theoretical findings but follows a different route. Instead of improving the binarization process itself, we focus on developing CNR architectures suitable and optimized for binarization. To this end, we propose a novel residual block specially tailored for binary networks and offer a rigorous investigation of our design choices. The network binarization process proposed by Rastegari et al. is as follows. First, a real is replaced by the sign function and then both the input and the convolutional weights are binarized in a similar way. An additional alpha term is further used in the paper to boost the performance and is computed as the average of the absolute weight values. Also, as we focus on human pose estimation and face alignment, for our experiments, we use the hour of glass architecture introduced by Neville et al., which is well suited for such fine uh, gradient recognition tasks. However, uh, we believe that the proposed residual block improvements are independent of the architecture used. There is also a number of architectural CNN innovations over the past years, like ResNet or uh, Inceptions, and while Many of these works inspired us and motivated us in our work. None of them are, have been applied for the binary case. So, this slide summarizes the main contribution of our work. We used as a starting point the original bottleneck block introduced by Hay et al. And through a series of architectural improvements, we derive the novel binary residual block as shown on the right. Using almost the same number of parameters, the proposed residual block outperforms by more than 5% in terms of absolute error the original bottleneck block for the binary case. As shown in the previous work, the binarization process itself causes a noticeable drop in performance when tested on classification or object detection. It turns out that the same holds true for human pose estimation. By directly binarizing the original residual module, the performance drops by almost 10% on the MPI human pose validation set. Starting from this, we identified a series of issues and investigated ways to bridge the gap between the real and the binary counterpart in a systematic manner. The first thing that we tried is to just increase the number of parameters. Due to the extreme quantization, passing the same amount of information may require a, high, a higher number of channels or uh, weights, and therefore, we increase the number of channels at the choke point created by the thin layer, effectively removing the bottleneck from the bottleneck. Now, by doing so, only a more modest performance was observed, while the number of parameters in the network become three times as large. In conclusion, the performance cannot be improved just by simply increasing the size or improving the width alone. The second thing that we tried is to introduce multi-scale filters similar to the inception module. By doing so, we try to address to some extent the limited diversity of filters that naturally appears for the binary case. And we added larger filters, efficiently decomposed in this case in pairs, analyzing the input at the multiple, res multiple resolution. 
As we can notice, by doing uh, so, we can notice a healthy performance improvement. The first thing that we tried is to remove uh, one by one convolutional layers. Our motivation to remove them is the following. In the binary case, filters are limited to two states only, and therefore have a very limited learning power. In practice, they, this may actually block the propagation of good features. As our results show, just by re uh, removing them, we can observe a large performance improvement, and therefore, one by one convolutional layers should be avoided for the binary case. Now, binary indoors tend to be even more sensitive to the problem of fading gradients. To elevate this, we design a novel module which has a form of a hierarchical parallel multi-structure that incorporates all the findings from the above experiments. The advantage of the new residual blocks are multifold. It offers an improved gradient flow. The shortest path, path to any of this layer is always one. Second, it improves the computational efficiency by splitting the larger convolution layers into smaller ones and concatenating their features instead of summing them together. Three, it analyzes the features at multiple scale, and four, it increases the feature diversity while avoiding, avoiding the usage of any one by one convolutional layers. In conclusion, by using a similar number of parameters, our proposed residual block offers more than 5% error reduction on the MPI dataset. We also investigated the effect of augmentation, the loss function, and the release on performance, and we found that although binarization is an extreme case of regularization, augmentation is still required. Although, for human pose estimation, L2 loss is the method of choice. For binarized network, at least, due to the uh, smart gradient, BC is a much better choice. Similarly to the orc of Rastegar et al., we found that adding a relu after each convolution layers further improves the, per the performance by 2%. To show the generalization capabilities of our module, we also evaluated it on 3D face alignment and segmentation. On 3D face alignment, our data sets or binary network achieve state-of-the-art results outperforming much larger real-valued CNNs. On facial part segmentation, our binary network approaches the accuracy of a real-valued network. Finally, we perform experiments for real-valued networks. When using a single hour of glass network, our model offers an improvement of almost 2%. However, when using a stack of eight networks, these differences diminishes. This suggests that the proposed block works much better for lower computational budgets. That being said, in this work, we propose a residual block designed with the aim to improve a performance on binary networks for fine-grained recognition tasks. To this end, we investigated several design choices that led to the introduction of the above-mentioned block. Our method offers consistent improvements over various fine-grained tasks, achieving top results and even surpassing previous real-valued based methods. I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention, and I'm looking forward to discuss more at our poster. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, just a clarification question. Are you learning the network from scratch in binary, or are you? Yes, the network is trained from scratch. In binary? Yes. OK, thank you. To add more, it's basically following the procedure des uh, described uh, in XNOR paper by Rastegar et al. in terms of uh, training procedure. Uh, when comparing the runtime, you have compared results uh, accuracy, but what are the hourglass uh, binarized versus non-binarized runtime? Unfortunately, we have not. We have implemented only as a proof of concept, and therefore we haven't really uh, been able to benchmark the the performance that one could, could obtain through an efficient implementation. However, if it's to extrapolate from the um, analysis uh, made by Rastegar et al. in his previous work, uh, one should be able to achieve. Uh, real-time or close to real-time performance for any of these tasks using uh, the, new the hour of glass network used in this work. Thank you. Are there more questions? Uh, 
I have a quick one. Um, I'm not very sure, but uh, in your final architecture, do you do pooling or not? Yes, the pooling is, uh, is retained. We actually tried removing it, and the results didn't change significantly. Okay. Okay, well, thanks again, the speaker.